Hi everyone. I've been meaning to do this one for a while because I know a lot of you have got to teach from home and you might be thinking, wouldn't it be more convenient if you had a better angle on your camera or that you had a better image or that you could zoom in on things and get a close up. If you're teaching particularly, this can be really, really useful. And what I've got here is I've got a camera set up and I've got it going straight into the computer here and I'm using it with Zoom, but this does work for Teams and for Skype as well and other video calling, video conferencing software as well. You might just need to check it. So if you've got a camera and it's got an HDMI coming out, then this is what you can do. And by the way, just want to point out a couple of things. I've got a cable running here into the computer and I do tape things down with gaffer tape. I've got links to all these kind of useful things that I might mention, like some of the things I'm about to show you. So um, get something like this. And if you get good quality, it won't stick so much when you pull it up. So be always be a bit careful if it's on paint or something, but I, this is decent quality so it doesn't stick to anything. Right, well it sticks to what you want, but when you pull it up, just don't leave it for a long time. So when you're finished, pull it up. So I've got the camera here. Now, there is something you need to know. If you have a look over here, you'll see it's got all the information on it, telling me all the settings and things like that. And if I'd pressed record on it, you'd have the record showing as well. And we don't want that. We want a clean image here. You don't want all this information on Zoom. However, when I'm teaching video and photography, actually that information can be quite useful. So a lot of cameras allow you to turn this off and you do need to check. You could Google your camera or wherever you search. You're looking for something called clean HDMI. And basically you're switching all that information off on the screen. And sometimes it's just a button on the camera. It might be an info button or display or in here, I've actually got to go into the menu. So this is a Canon EOS R. I'm just going to press menu. And this is useful for camcorders. It doesn't have to be a mirrorless or DSLR like this. And I press that, choose this option. And there you go, nice clean image. The flickering here is just because of the screen here and the video, don't worry about that if you are seeing any flickering and you can just see straight out into the garden there. So that is the camera that I've got that I can use to connect. Now, if I want to connect into here, I've actually got three options that I've used. Okay, so in front of me, you can actually see, I've got this little mixer, it's a Blackmagic Design ATEM Mini. We're gonna talk about that in a moment because you might want to connect more than one camera in because this can be very useful for teaching a shot like this and maybe a close up and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. Now something I've been using a lot is this CamLink 4K. Now it's really useful, it just plugs in, it goes into Windows or a Mac, it's got HDMI here, it's got the USB here, I just need an adapter for it to go into my MacBook Pro because that's USB-C and it worked like a charm and I've gotta say very, very useful. So I've got links for this below as well. I was using until Apple updated to Big Sur this one, and this uses Thunderbolt. Now the problem with this one, this is a Ultra Studio mini recorder. The Thunderbolt mainly is for Mac, so you may not have that. It was very useful for me because I could have two different types of input, one being the HDMI and the other one SDI, which is good for much longer cables, like if I'm doing a live event. So there's that. And here is the switcher. As I said, we're going to get to that in just a moment. So I'm here in Zoom. Now, how do I get it to appear in Zoom? Because I've got my webcam in here, which is the FaceTime HD on a Mac. And it's down here in the bottom left corner. You've got where it says stop video, a little arrow that's pointing up. Now you can do this by going into the preferences and in the video settings, you can actually choose the camera from there. But you'll see I've got a few different options here and you can see there's the FaceTime, that's the webcam on here. And I've got CamLink 4K, that's what I want to choose. The switcher is this Blackmagic design, we're going to come to that in a moment. You'll see I've got some others here like the GoPro webcam, the Neural Cam Live and also the ES webcam utility. Now, the thing about the, these is these are bits of software that companies have developed so you can plug straight in. So this camera, for example, I can just connect with USB. 
and the same with the GoPro Hero 8 and above. So you don't need to get any of these for it. You can find those, I've got links below, I've got videos for them. And the Neural Cam Live allows me to connect my iPhone so I can use the camera on there, which is a much better camera than I've got on the MacBook or the MacBook Pro. So that can be useful. The other thing about freeing up the camera is you can move it so you can show things as well, like you might want to get in close. And we're going to see that because I'm going to show you something in a moment. It also does come up here under the microphone as well. And you can see here it's got the CamLink 4K and it's also got the Blackmagic design. What that means is it's going to take the microphone off of here or if I'm using that camera which has got the best microphone connected, that will work really well. And I'm going to use that when I go to the Blackmagic design. You can still keep using the microphone that's actually in your computer or your laptop. You don't have to switch it, but you might want to. So you can actually choose your microphone independent of which camera is being shown. So these are easy to plug in. They're really good and I highly recommend them. I think this one's maybe, this is only HD now. So this is good. I think that was about 120 pounds recently, but it allows you to do so much with it. But then we're going to take a look at actually doing it with this, the ATEM Mini. Okay, this is about 300 pounds. I can put four HDMI connectors into it, four cameras. It doesn't have to be a camera. It can be a gaming console or something else that can go into here and then it comes out. Let's have a look at that. So I'm just going to set something up and I'm going to be right back. Okay, so I've got everything set up now. I've got a GoPro Hero 7 here. Um, this has got HDMI out. Not all of the GoPros do. I don't think the 8 and the 9, Hero 8 and 9 do. I've got my Canon EOS R here pointing to here. So that's going to show you the mixer and what I'm going to do there. This is the mixer. Everything is now connected into here. And I've got the main camera as well. And on Zoom, I just made sure, and you can do this through the preferences down here. I just made sure that the Blackmagic design I've got it on the 30 frames per second. You could have the 60. It's entirely up to you. You might choose it based on whether lights are flickering or monitors and things like that. And the 30 might take that away or it might be better on the 60. I just want to point something out here. This is something that I use a lot. This is like a little table stand that I use for putting my laptop on when I'm doing live streaming and teaching and things like that. And it's not dust that you can see here. It's just all the scuff. This is metal so it has been cleaned it's just might not look like it and what I've got here is a drone so I can show people a close-up so the GoPro is obviously getting a shot from the top here and I could show it all sorts of things like moving the rotors and so on and then I've got this pointing to here so this is really easy firstly more or less just plugged in and went you can see I've got the HDMI is in the back there there's three but you could have four. There's one coming out which you don't need to into here and then it's connected by USB-C into the computer. And if I want to switch, and someone else could be doing this, but you'll see it's just really simple. I can just switch from shot to shot and you're seeing it coming up here so you can actually see what I'm doing. And if there was a fourth one, if I press four, there's nothing there, but I can come back to here. If you want to make it look a little bit nicer and actually dissolve or fade from one to another, I can do that too. So I can just press those buttons and you can see it's a much nicer effect. There are other effects as well. You can have it wipe across like that. You can have a bit of fun with this. Something that is useful is picture in picture. And I can do that by just pressing, there we go, You've now got me in the corner. Now, if I was to go into the software on this, which is connected to the computer, I could actually make that bigger. I can position it on different parts of the screen as well. So that's really nice. And I'm going to do videos on how you can do that in more detail of how this works. But quite honestly, you can plug it in and you can just go and just press these buttons. 
And if you're familiar with green screen, you can use it for this as well. So green screen, for any of you that don't know, is what they use on weather forecasts when they're standing in front of the map. That's quite often a green screen where it's superimposed. So the back is green and it's just replaced with something else. You may have seen virtual backgrounds on things like Zoom and it just does a better version of that. So you might find that useful to put yourself somewhere else. So there you have it. This is the ATEM Mini. It was about 300 pounds. There's links for all these kind of things below. There is a pro version where you can stream directly to the internet and you can use this for streaming as well. So the pro, you don't need a computer. It just connects straight to the internet for you. But that's about double the price, so you may not need it. This and the Cam Link were in short supply. They were just so popular. I think these A10 Minis, they were used at the Emmy Awards. They were actually given to people so that they could do their prize giving from home. I need one of these. I could do with winning a prize of something. Not quite sure what yet, but hey, stay tuned. And speaking of staying tuned, why not subscribe to the channel where I'll keep you posted on all sorts of things and try and help you with teaching online, which has become oh so important right now. So this is great for the experience of anyone teaching schools, universities, or just their classes like yoga, cookery, or like myself, photography and video. If you want to stay in touch, as I said, do subscribe. You can go to my website, shootwithschwartz.com. You can then subscribe to the newsletter, which I'll send out every now and again, and you can keep up to date there as well. If you do like this video, please do like it. And also, if you've got colleagues who might need help with it as well, or you just think anyone would find this useful, please do share it as well. So if you do like this, please do like. And if you do want to share it with your colleagues, that would probably help or for anyone else for that matter. Thanks for watching. Happy teaching and stay safe.